hello learners this is education online program uh, with you is teacher rose hezekia and i'm here by to present for you a lesson in chemistry for senior one and two our topic for today is uh, about acids bases and salts uh, but we will be focusing specifically on bases so what is a base? What is a base by definition? A base, a base is a substance. A base is a substance which dissolves, which dissolves in water dissociates or we say it break down it's a substance which dissolves in water dissociates or break down to give to give hydroxide to give hydroxide hydroxide ion to give hydroxide ion as the only negatively as the only negatively uh, charged ion as the only negatively charged ion so this is definition of a base. A base is a substance which dissolves in water. It dissociates to give us hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged ions. Uh, or in another way we can say base, we can say base, Bases are oxide. Bases are oxide or hydroxide. Bases are oxide or hydroxide of metal of metal or ammonium group or ammonium group. So we have two definitions of bases. Either we say it is a substance which dissolves in water, dissociates to give us hydroxide ion. Hydroxide ion is the only negatively charged ion. Or we say that bases are the oxides or hydroxides of metal or ammonium group so we have examples of bases we have examples of bases for example we have sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is a base uh, we have potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide is a base potassium hydroxide is a base uh, calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide is also a base so if we have sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide calcium hydroxide all these bases, when they are dissolved in water, they break down or they dissociate to give us hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged ions. So, one, we say that sodium hydroxide is a base. So, we have sodium hydroxide. So, 
sodium hydroxide that is in aqueous uh, solution this will break down this will break down to give us sodium ion plus hydroxide ions and then you say bases are substances when dissolved in water it gives us hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged ion so this is also aqueous and this one is in aqueous form so this is the negatively charged ion that is the hydroxide so when sodium dissociates or dissolves in water, it gives us sodium ions as positive ions plus hydroxide ions as negative charged ion as the only negatively charged ion. We have number two, we have potassium hydroxide that is in aqueous form. This will also dissociate or break down to give us potassium ions, that is a positive ion, plus the hydroxide, that is the only negatively charged ion. Then we have number three, we have calcium hydroxide. This will also is in aqueous form this will also dissociate or break down to give us calcium ion that is in aqueous form plus hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged uh, ion so this is how a base is defined a substance we dissolve in water it dissociates or break down to give us hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged ion or the oxide or hydroxide of metal or ammonium group then the hydroxide the hydroxide that bases produce gives bases their characteristic properties. So bases are, are identified as a result of the hydroxide ion that they have. So without this hydroxide ion, we cannot call it uh, a base, or the, the hydroxide ion gives it its characteristic uh, properties. So we have bases. Let us look at the example of bases and then their origin where we get them occurrence occurrence and then their use their usage so base number one we have magnesium oxide magnesium oxide we have magnesium oxide or calcium oxide magnesium oxide or calcium oxide we we can get magnesium oxide or calcium oxide in antiacids so antiacids are are having basic basic properties or hydroxide ions and uh, they are used in digestion digestion uh, they are used like digestion tablets digestion tablets uh, and then calcium oxide calcium oxide is used in making cement making cement uh, the role that it plays is in neutralizing, it neutralizes, it neutralizes soil acidity. It neutralizes soil acidity. Then 
Then we have alkalis. Alkalis are also bases. We have sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, This sodium hydroxide is used in making soap. We use them in making soap. That is saponification, preparation of soap. And water. Uh, ammonia solution. We have ammonia solution this is also a base this ammonia solution is used in making fertilizers making fertilizers it's used in making fertilizers and then it is used also in cleaning fluid it is used in cleaning fluid at our houses. At our houses. So these are examples of bases and their uses. Then, if we have, uh, if we have substance. How do we detect that this substance is a base, acid, or uh, a neutral substance? Because most of all the chemical solutions that we have, they fall within three categories. Either a base or acid, or it is uh, a neutral solution. That is uh, when we also check the pH. We have either acidic, basic, or neutral. Then how do we detect that a substance is uh, either a base, acid, or neutral? So we have an experiment. This experiment, the aim of this experiment is to identify three substances identify three different substances. We have experiment. <coughs> then we have the aim of the experiment. The aim of the experiment is to identify three substances identify three substances then for us to carry for you to for one to carry an experiment you need an apparatus you need an apparatus uh, and then you need reagents apparatus and reagents so uh, we have three test tubes three test tubes then we have blue and red blue and red litmus paper blue and red litmus uh, paper then we have one of the reagents is distilled water uh, we have hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid uh, and then we have sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide solution 
sodium hydroxide solution. So we have three test tubes. Test tube number one. Test tube number one. Let us assume that this is a test tube. Test tube uh, A. Then you have test tube B. Test tube B. And then uh, we have test tube C. Test tube C. Uh, so the first step is the procedure is that we add 10 cubic centimeter of each of the reagent 10 cubic centimeter of each of the reagents in the three in the three test tubes this is the step number one so we have here 10 cubic centimeter here also 10 cubic centimeter and then in test tube number C also we have 10 cubic centimeter our reagents are distilled water hydrochloric acid and then sodium hydroxide solution so in step number one we add 10 cubic centimeter of each of the reagents in the three test tubes a b and c then step number two of our procedure is that we immerse we immerse a red litmus paper in in all the test tubes we immerse a uh, red litmus paper uh, in the test tube and then we let the set up the set up stand for some time for some time then after that we 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 look at the observation what are the observations what are the observations then after that after observation you also take a blue litmus paper and then you dip the blue the, the blue litmus paper into the three uh, test tubes after observation number one we have two observations we have observation number one and then we have observation number one when we immerse the red litmus paper then observation number two is when we immerse the blue litmus paper then uh, we draw a table to record the observations that will take place so i have a table like this with four columns and then three rows one two and then three so we have column number one is column of the litmus paper 
Then column number two, we have the acid. Then number three, we have the base. And then we have the distilled water. So in the first stage, or in the first step of the procedure, we immerse red litmus paper in all the three test tubes, A, B, C. Of course, these test tubes, one contains acid, the other one base, and the other one distilled water. So when we immerse red litmus paper, when we immerse red litmus paper, red litmus uh, in the acid there will be no change in the test tube where there is an acid there will be no change in the base the red litmus paper will turn blue and then in the distilled water there will also be what no change Uh, in the second, we bring blue litmus, blue litmus paper. In the acid, in the acidic solution, the blue litmus paper will turn red. In the base, there will be no change. In the distilled water, also no change no change so in conclusion in conclusion in conclusion we have in conclusion okay uh, we have two observations we have observation number one when we immerse the red litmus paper observation number two when we immerse the blue litmus paper and uh, as i summarize uh, the result of our observation in form in tabular form so we have when we immerse the red litmus paper in test tube number one uh, that has got an acid there was no change when the red lit litmus paper is immersed in the test tube in the base the red lit litmus paper turns into blue in the distilled water the test tube that contains distilled water there was no change then observation number two when blue litmus paper was used when the blue litmus paper was immersed into a test tube that contains acid the blue litmus paper turns into red. In the base, the, the, the test tube solution that contains a base, there is no change. The test tube that contains distilled water also, there is no change. So in summary, in summary, in summary, can be summarized that Acids turn blue litmus paper red. And then base turn red litmus paper blue. Then we have distilled water that is neutral solution, does not change or has got no effect, has got no effect on either litmus paper. So neutral solution neutral solution does not 
change does not change red or blue litmus paper does not change red or blue litmus paper so we have a uh, basic solutions tan red litmus paper blue acidic solution tan uh, blue litmus paper red and then neutral solution has got no effect on both litmus papers so for example if we have a solution of uh, zinc oxide zinc oxide for example we have zinc oxide and sodium hydroxide so all these are what all these are bases because we say bases are either oxides of metals or solutions that when dissolved in water uh, dissociate to give hydroxide ion as the only negatively charged ion so we have zinc oxide and sodium uh, hydroxide are both are both bases they are both bases uh, because because they are both bases because they react they react to form uh, to form salt and water only so we have uh, when uh, uh, when base react with acid we have always the result is salt and water so we have zinc oxide and sodium hydroxide all these are bases because when they react with acid we get salt and water only as the only uh, product that we have so let us look at the chemical examples of these chemical reactions that confirms that zinc oxide and sodium hydroxide are, are bases so we have zinc oxide sorry uh, plus sulfuric acid plus sulfuric acid that is in aqueous this will react to give us zinc to give us zinc sulfate that is aqueous plus water that is in liquid form this is one then two we have sodium hydroxide so this is in aqueous form also sodium hydroxide aqueous plus uh, hydrochloric acid in aqueous form this will react to give us uh, sodium chloride salt that is aqueous plus water that is in liquid form so we have a solution of base plus acid gives us salt plus water and then we have a solution of ammonia in water or aqueous ammonia is a base because it also reacts with uh, acid to form salt and water so when an acid or when a base when a base when a base re 
react with an acid when a base reacts with an acid the product the product is salt and water only the product is salt and water only and we call this reaction this reaction is called neutralization neutralization reaction because we are neutralizing the base and the acid to give us salt and water we no longer have the base or the acid but we have salt and water so a reaction of acid and a base gives us salt and water and the reaction is called neutralization reaction so if we have an acid we have a, a solution a solution of a solution of ammonia a solution of ammonia in water a solution of ammonia in water or aqueous or aqueous or aqueous ammonia or aqueous ammonia or aqueous ammonia so we have a solution of ammonia or aqueous ammonia can also react with acid can react with acid react with acid and then it gives also salt plus water therefore aqueous ammonia is a base therefore aqueous ammonia is a base so bases reacts with acids to give us salt and water and in the experiment uh the experiment is telling us that we can identify we can identify solutions or we can detect whether it is an acidic basic or neutral solution with the help of a litmus paper so a litmus paper can help us identify whether the solution is acidic base or neutral and then i said reaction of an acid in a base gives us salt and water and the reaction is called neutralization reaction so dear learners we have come to the end of our lesson uh thank you uh see you in the next lesson bye bye